everyone, it is me Vegeta T23 and welcome back to my new what if. Today we're talking about what if Vegeta was born as a Saiyan God. Before I start I'd like to mention that I created a discord server for you to join. The link is in the description of this video so if you'd like to join in and talk to me and the rest of my fans, it's there. I'd also like to mention that I created an Instagram so you can survey my very uninteresting life. I mainly post Osu stuff. Now back to the video. Before anything, I'd like to thank my very good friend xkenkaneki 7 on Discord for supplying me with this hot dripping fan art. You guys haven't seen a fan art this good since Max, and let me tell you something. I don't know if I can call this drawing handsome, but I'm gonna do it anyways, this drawing is handsome. He supplied me with a sneak peeks as well so you can see the process on how it's done. From basic sketching, transforming into line art, to coloring and final touches like the aura and shading. Truly amazing work which actually kind of stemmed from me helping him in Minecraft believe it or not. <laughs> so once again, thank you for the contribution and keep up the good work. I know what you're capable of fam. Now on to the recap. In the last part we discussed the usual canon, like Goten being born and Gohan finding Videl. All the way to the Tenkaichi Budokai. Everything goes the same, except Goku and Vegeta switching opponents in Bobbidi's ship. After defeating Bobbidi's goons, Bobbidi tried possessing both Goku and Vegeta. That doesn't work, but Boo still gets released. Boo fought Vegeta and turned him into Candy and back to normal when he realized it was impossible to fight Candy. Vegeta then powered up a final flash and destroyed Boo once and for all. With the recap out of the way, Let's continue the what if. It's been about 7 months after the Boo incident and everyone is just chilling. Vegeta is training his ass off along with Goku, Gohan, Nappa and Raditz. Boma prepares them a nice meal and they carelessly eat. Meanwhile at the far end of the universe a god named Beerus has woken up trying to remember his dream and the prophecy. Beerus can't remember the dream so after destroying a bunch of planets he asked the oracle fish about this new foe. He gets his answer so Beerus and Whis then head towards earth. On earth Bulma and the Saiyans go to prepare everything for her birthday. On the cruiser ship the preparations are done and they begin with guests already arriving. The entire squad wishes Bulma happy birthday out of kindness. Vegeta and Nappa then talk for a little with Goku joining them in. Raditz and Piccolo then talk about the past and how it was all a hassle back then. All of a sudden, Supreme Kai reaches Vegeta and the Saiyans. He says that a god of destruction Beerus is coming to Earth and doesn't quite know his intentions yet. Vegeta immediately remembers with Nappa nodding back, looking at Vegeta and knowing what's about to happen. Trunks then senses something and warns the others. Vegeta tells everyone to stay alert and to stay close because shit is about to go down. The energy Vegeta and Trunks are sensing is getting closer. While those with normal key can't really sense it and are just looking around. All of a sudden they see a bright flash in front of them as they all get into a stance. They then see a purple cat and blue tall guy standing before them, proving Vegeta's and Nappa's suspicions. Beerus then speaks up saying he's come for a Super Saiyan God. Vegeta says that's him and what business he has on earth. He says he has been observing him, watching him grow stronger over all these years. Beerus then continues on how he dreamt of him fighting Vegeta and how this is coming out true. If he disobeys, the planet can be kissed goodbye. Vegeta has no other choice but to fight, however Trunks tries to step in, wanting to take the place. But Vegeta knows of Beerus' power and what he can do. Vegeta then accepts the challenge for the sake of Earth. Vegeta and Beerus all ascend to the sky and they begin the fight. Vegeta first uses Super Saiyan God as it's his base and fights Beerus. He puts up a really good fight but nothing near the full power Beerus wanted to see. So Vegeta goes Super Saiyan Rose and continues. With each passing blow they went up further into the atmosphere and shared punches and kicks with each other. Vegeta wasn't fully powered up yet but thought that Beerus has his limit and continues on fighting. Beerus then asks Vegeta whether this is his all because he is quite impressed but he's still restraining. Vegeta then powers up his rosé all the way up as they reinitiate the fight. Vegeta pushes every ounce of energy he has into his punches and kicks and Beerus is trying quite hard not to expose himself. 
They clash for quite a long time and at this point Beerus knows Vegeta isn't gonna give up that quickly. So he unleashes even more of his power. Vegeta can hardly keep up with Beerus constant dominance assertion but tries his best regardless. However all of it is quite pointless as Vegeta has one more trick up his hand. The next form he uses is his latest one, Super Saiyan Rose Evolution, as he rushes Beerus with it. Beerus has literally no time to react as he gets punched right in the stomach. Beerus tries to catch some air but really can't and just collapses towards earth on the ground. Beerus and Whis have went back to their planet. Beerus went to sleep while Whis was occasionally coming to get some meals with Bulma and Vegeta. Speaking of which, Vegeta even became acquainted with the angel and they're getting along nicely. Whis told Vegeta that he was indeed the one Beerus wanted to fight and that it was the prophecy he had about a Saiyan God coming to take him on and it turned out to be true as he was overwhelmed with him. Sensing real divine energy from within, Whis then says that he can train him making Vegeta's eyebrows go up as he hears that. Vegeta knew that Whis was special and wanted to know just how special so he asked. Whis replies that he is Beerus' attendant and master. Vegeta's jaw just drops and he then proceeds to beg Whis to train him. Seeing a big potential in the Saiyan, he decides to train him. Vegeta then tells Bulma his goodbyes as he goes with Whis. On Beerus' world, Vegeta is training hard not letting Whis have a single break until he himself taps out. He's been on the planet for 6 months and Whis went on another one of his tours to earth for food. However he meets Goku and Goku asks him to be trained by him as well. Raditz overhears this and wants to go too. Whis graciously accepts. Whis thinking that those boys might have potential, he brings them in to train with him after having a meal with Bulma of course. Raditz and Goku were fighting with each other due to Goku being an annoyance but it was mostly eventless. On Beerus' world, Vegeta is waiting patiently while training some himself. Whis then comes and sees Raditz behind Whis as he face palms. The next second you hear a second face palm from Vegeta as Goku emerges too. Vegeta now gets to train with his fellow Saiyans and he doesn't like it at all. However, on the other end of the universe in an unknown galaxy, the now defunct Frieza Force needs their leader back and they need him fast as he's the only one who can bring fear back in this universe. They make their way to earth and they find the Pilaf gang and they force them to summon a dragon to grant them their wish. They wish for Frieza to come back to life and instead of coming back in a million pieces, he comes as a whole and they leave immediately as to not get caught. Frieza then vows he will rid the universe of Saiyans once and for all and will become a god himself in needs be. So he begins training on his own. On earth everyone sense an unknown power appear and disappear as quickly as he came and are questioning themselves. Meanwhile Vegeta and Goku both sense something coming from earth and look at each other. So our squad began training even harder right away. It's been about a year for our Saiyans back on Beerus' planet and they have buffed up. Goku and Raditz can now both turn into Super Saiyan Blue. Having that covered, everyone is now clear to go back to their home planet and relax and well, they're brought back. Whis tells them that if they need to clear the restriction during the training, that he's happy to help anytime. So they thank him and he leaves. And with that, we're leaving things be for now. Thank you for watching. If you think I should stop dripping so hard, then click dislike. But if you liked the video, hit that like button. If you'd like me to cover your idea in the near future, comment down below, and as always, peace out.